So with the this next one, we're going to do the radial nerve. And I like to have the individual sitting. And the reason is, is because the radial nerve spirals around, comes around the the humerus and the spiral groove, and then goes anterior. And you can easily rotate the hand and the arm around while you're doing this. And it doesn't, you don't have to abduct the shoulder to do it. Um, and you can get access posteriorly without um, having to contort the patient when they're lying down. The other way you can do it is to have them lying down supine and then have them roll over into the lateral decubitus position afterwards. Um, I kind of like it sitting. Sometimes with the polytrauma patients, you have to do it side lying and then get them the rolling and then it's a really tough one anyway. So let's try this. I'm gonna start off still with the, the superficial, a superficial setting and let's see if we can find our self over here. Okay, so I just switched over to a mid setting on this particular machine. You can do it in can do it a couple of different ways. So here is the, the radial nerve and artery. And I'm going to make a slight adjustment here. Okay. A couple landmarks to point out. Humerus, radial nerve, and We've got some vessels here. Make our color, color box small. Not a lot of flow in this one, but we do have a couple vessels surrounding it. This is the nerve here, artery, uh, vein. I'm smushing the vein there. Now the radial nerve here is gonna be sending off branches to triceps as well. Here, the, um, it's gonna come around the humerus. I'll start right here, and then we're gonna follow it. Now, the you're gonna notice that when you start scanning superior, it's going to drift to the left of the screen and it's going to become oblique. And so when, when you have something that's drifting left, then we're going to rotate our transducer, wag it and follow it around. Rotate and wag. And then, so here we can see, this is a little fascicular branch right there. Here's an artery. This is it here. And then we're going to come all the way around. And it's going to come all the way around. I'm getting, I don't have enough gel here. Anyway, we'll get over to the plexus in a second. So let's put some more gel on here. Find myself. There we go. Now we're 
basically up to the plexus. Now, at this point, if you want to get really close, then you're going to have to abduct the arm. So we'll just follow the radio nerve back down again. Oh, lost it. So once we pass the, the spiral groove here, you can see that it sits right on the, both the artery and the nerves come right over the humerus. And that's where it's gonna get injured. Right. Now, we're gonna rotate this around here. And now the radial nerve um, is going to come into the anterior compartment here. So now the radial nerve is diving deep underneath brachioradialis. And here it's going to um, come up to the radius. And as we cross over the radius in the radial head, we're gonna see that it splits into superficial and deep components. The deep is going to be the posterior interosseous nerve, and the superficial is gonna be the superficial branch of the radial nerve. The posterior interosseous nerve is going to run through the uh, supinator itself. What I like to do here is have the wrist in, uh, in pronation. And what that does is it helps to uh, give us access to the supinator and the superficial radial nerve. Here's the radial nerve here. We're gonna follow it along. This is the deep branch here. This is the superficial branch. Now we're gonna follow the superficial branch and it's going to come superficial. <laughs> it's gonna travel along the radius. right here. So it's really just a monofascicular structure. There. The deep branch is a little more difficult uh, to follow. So here is supinator. First, I'm gonna go in long axis on the supinator just so you can see it itself. So this is the radial head here. This is supinator right here. And this little fascial plane here is where the posterior interosseous nerve is going to run. So I'm going to go back into short axis now. Here you can see that little plane. Here is the posterior interosseous nerve. The posterior interosseous nerve, there's gonna be two or three little fascicles that go with it. So here's the posterior interosseous nerve. I'm gonna follow it down. Here, a couple little fascicles. It's going deep. It's coming around. 
really I'm just sliding the transducer along here. You can see that I'm getting a little bit oblique to it. And I'll follow it. Here it is right here. Here we are between the two heads, the superficial and deep head of supinator. We're just going to pronate. See how pronating it, pronating the wrist really helps us see these fascicles. It brings it uh, more superficial. And now we're just going to continue to follow it along. And it's going to start branching pretty quickly here. So a couple of fascicles here. Here's another fascicle. And these are going to, these fascicles are going to branch off and do the um, finger extensors at, at this level. So they're, you're going to just start following these little fascicles along like that. The posterior interosseous nerve, just like the anterior interosseous nerve, eventually ends up on the uh, aponeurosis or on the um, anterior, uh, the interosseous membrane. Yeah, thanks, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can follow it uh, down on the interosseous membrane. It's going to your your localizing um, landmark here is going to be the artery. Uh, that uh, follows with it. So these little fascicles here. And so if you're going to do a nerve block, you can just do it right on this um, um, membrane here as well. <laughs>